pleasing to Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. How he treats people. How he um, opened their eyes to understanding that his way is the best way. And he even said, and, um, and, and this part of, of the lesson, it says, Paul therefore stressed sp um, spiritual unity, asking the Philippi Philippians to love one another mm -hmm. and to be one in spirit. Yeah. And purpose. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how many churches and how many gatherings can we get together and see that one? See that one unity, that one purpose. It got to be so clear that when you walk in, you feel God's in the presence. Because if you're doing what God says, God is going to meet you where you're at. God is going to meet us where we at. He's not going to leave us. And then it says, when we work together, caring for the problems of others as if they were our problems, we demonstrate Christ's example of putting others first. And we experience unity. You don't have to, you don't have to bow down to people. You don't have to do all, all you have to do is listen to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just want you to listen to them. Mm -hmm. They don't okay. want a whole lot from you. It says, don't be so concerned about making a good impression mm -hmm. or meeting your own needs that you stray relationship in God's family. Mm -hmm. And he's letting us know, we're church, we're a family. So we are more than just members coming on Sundays. We are more than members just coming on Wednesday night. We are more than that. We are family. That means you're supposed to care about the ones that God is putting before you. He's letting you know that I'm here. And then he even says this in a, um, a reference scripture, which is Matthew 11:29. This is the King James Version. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. God is letting you know, I'm going to put something on you, but you're going to have to learn about him. You're going to have to realize there's things you have to do. There's things you have to come in align with so he can bless you, so he can bless us. And then he say, um, and it says, learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and shall find rest. You shall find rest upon your soul. Amen. How many of us want rest? How many? How many of us want peace and joy? Just yes, just just something to give us something to to to, to just be proud about. Mm -hmm. Just just knowing that God is with us. And I love it in here when it says here, several key characteristics of Jesus is one, Jesus has always existed with God. And it's in John 1.1. 1, 1. You know, right? Yeah. Of the word. With the word. <laughs> right? So, and then here it says, two, Christ is equal to God. Because he is God. Mm -hmm. And it's saying that, and that's verified in John 1 1. And that's Galatians 1 15 through 19. Mm -hmm. And you gotta understand. But 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 Jesus never took it upon himself to outdo God or to claim that he was God. He said he was God's son. So he never put it upon himself to be greater than God. Mm -hmm. And then here, three, though Christ is God, he became a man in order to fulfill God's plan Amen. for salvation yes. for all people. Mm -hmm. This is something that shows the heart of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then do you really think we're not supposed to be doing some stuff to help people? And even if, and I, I got to admit, it's a lot of people who's challenging to help them. But I find when 
I just offer and I see where they take it or if they don't take it, I did my part. That's it. And I can't, I can't carry baggage that people's carrying because they're mad or they have um, attitudes, they have all kinds of past hurts and all this other stuff. You can't carry that on people, but you can offer them support and help. And then here, Christ did not just um, just have the appearance of being a man. He actually became human yeah. to identify with our sins. Isn't that something? Yes, he did. I mean, to think about what Christ did for us. That's it. He didn't have to do it. That's we heard of the, the story and, and, and probably read about it in, in Sunday school about 10,000 angels could have came and got him out of that out of that situation with the cross. But what did he do? He stayed. And he kept, he went through everything, the beating. I mean, when you see the passion of Christ, it shows some details of what he went through. When you think about all what he went through, Ooh, yeah. how he was hurt, how he took that. And I mean, he even got on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. That's right. How many of us could say that about an enemy or somebody we know treat us bad? But we got to get to that. We got to get to that behavior. We got to get to that action. We got to get to the behavior and what Jesus is showing in his actions. He is showing us. Christ volunteered, voluntarily laid aside the divine right and privilege out of love for his father. And he also loved us. Amen. Because he knew that he, if he didn't do that, we would be lost forever. So here you got in this, um, in this passage of scripture, um, some of the details about it is deeper because God um, Jesus is showing, and, 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 and Paul is showing the love of Christ and all the things he went through to make sure we was all right. And then you get to um, the fifth verse. He said, who being in very nature God did not consider equal with God mm -hmm. something to be used to his own advantage. Did Jesus do that? He didn't do nothing like that. Every time he had any kind of an, an, an encounter, any kind of miracle, he prayed to God first. That's right. He talked to his heavenly father. Mm -hmm. So what do that tell us we should do? That's right. When we're going through bad moments, mm -hmm. we're going through some hard times, yeah, we're going through some hard people, people who just determined to put you down, yeah. people determined to talk slander on you. People that's, that is not seeing no good in you. But you know you okay. That's right. And this is why when you have a relationship with God, God shows you what he sees in you. That's right. And when God shows you what he sees in you, it don't matter what anybody else right. is saying. As long as you're following his word and you're doing what he tells you to do. And it says, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? I find it interesting that he either washed his, his disciples' feet before he was taken away. I find it interesting that he showed humility. And every almost every step of his walk, even when he was being judged and he was being um, tried by the by the Philippians, Sadducees, no, by not the Philippians, by the Pharisees and Sadducees, and being tested and being tricked, trying to be tricked, mm -hmm. he never lost his character. Mm -hmm. How many of us have encountered people trying to do us wrong? Mm -hmm. 
and we lost it. <laughs> or we just wasn't having it. I'm better than I used to be. That's all I'm going to tell you. All right. <laughs> okay? That's good. Because God working on me. And he's still working on me. And he's going to work on me until I go to my grave That's and right. go up there to be with him. And I'm okay with that. You know? And, and it's getting to the point where you see so much foulness. And then in, in, in verse 8, um, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Even death on the cross. Now you understand what obedient to death means? That means he didn't have to do it. Yeah. That means that he had a choice. Mm -hmm. But his choice was always looking at us. Looking at his father. Pleasing his father. Are we trying to please God? Oh, okay. Because if we're trying to please God, we should be treating people a lot better. And should be treating people just in a, in a wonderful Christian way. And yep. not a fake yep. Christian, because yep. you know I've seen them Christians that on Sunday they'll tell you, God bless you, my sister. <laughs> God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Amen. And I love you, my sister. Mm -hmm. But on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you can't recognize mm -hmm. them. <laughs> God is letting us know it's time to come correct. Mm -hmm. He is not playing anymore. Time is winding up. <laughs> and then when he looks at this, he said, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him, Jesus, the hand, the, the name that is above every name. I love that verse. I love that verse. Because it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee not just a few, not just, you know, the Pharisees. Every knee should bow in heaven. And that means not even just down here. He got them up there in heaven bowing. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It shows his sovereignty. It shows his holiness. It shows his power. And one thing I am starting to get frustrated with when I see a lot of people um, talking about God, preaching about God, you're not mentioning nothing about his holiness. You're not mentioning anything about his sovereignty. You can't put God on a level with us. You can't put God on the level with man or anyone. Not the same Jew, not Saint Mary, not Saint nothing. You can't put God on the same level as man. He is holy. He is sovereign. He is real and powerful. And I love it how he said, on heaven and on earth and under. Under. The earth. There's nowhere God won't be. Amen. There's nowhere God can't get to. So that tells you if the enemy is threatening you in your mind about what he's going to do to you, how he's going to defeat you, how he's going to hurt you, right. God is there. And if you belong to him, God is right there oh, God. blocking him. Yeah. He holding up a staff. Let yeah, him know. Yeah. Don't come no closer. Mm. Don't touch her. That's right. And it tells you right there the power and the love God has for us cannot be measured. Hallelujah. But we got to respect it. And I hear a lot of people say, well, you can come to church any kind of way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dress up. And I see some of the some of the outfits that you come into. God asks you to be holy. God asks you to be respectful. So when you come in, and I'm not saying you got to wear dresses, you got to wear suits, you got to do all that. But decency. That's what God is looking for from his people. 
He's not looking for you to come into church like you would go to a bar. You got to understand, we have a standard that we live up to, to our heavenly, holy, and sovereign God. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. wants to get us in the right position right. so he can bless us in the way he mm -hmm. wants to bless That's us. Right. That's right. You're not doing it for man. You're doing it for God. Hallelujah. You're not doing it for Uncle Uncle Bob or Aunt, Aunt Peggy or anybody else. You're doing it for God. That's right. And when you're doing it for God, He's the one who gets the glory. Hallelujah. Nobody else, and no matter what anybody else say, you don't have to worry about that. What you need to understand is you got to be listening to what God is saying yeah. and directing you to do. Yeah, and once yeah. you do that, it's all said and done. Oh, it's all good, like my brother, my, my son said. I'm good. But you got to understand that holiness is very important to God. Yeah, it, is. it is not, you can't just do him any kind of way. And then it says here, in the heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue announce that God, that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the to the glory of the of the God the Father. You got to understand, we got a responsibility, mm -hmm. and we got to live up to it. Mm -hmm. And when this talks about us being living in harmony with each other. Respecting each other, not showing envy, jealousy, bitterness, or any of that. Yeah. When you start feeling that creeping up in you, you get to praying quick. That's right. Yeah. Well, because it's the yeah. enemy trying to infiltrate you yeah. to pull you away from God. And you can't let nothing, nothing. do that. Amen. Nothing is that important. Amen. I give God glory today. Thank and I thank him for all that he does. But as believers, we should have a different attitude. Mm -hmm. One that enables us to lay aside our rights in order to serve Amen. others. If we say we follow Christ, we must also say we want to live as he lived. Can we say that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can we say that we live, we're living as Christ lived? Yep. You've got Lord, to. It, it, it's, and it's a constant mm -hmm. fight. It is. Because, because of what um, Eve and Adam did, we have something in us that keeps surfacing. That's why the Bible says, mm -hmm. never cease from praying. That's right. When you're talking to him and letting him know, I need help here. Help. I need you to direct me. Yes. I need you to show me. God is waiting to do just that. Oh, yes, he is. And he will do it. Mm -hmm. So as I close today, I just want all of us to realize that we are a family. We are a family in Christ. Anything and everything that happens with our family fellowship, it needs to be joyful. It needs to be loving. It needs to be careful. And we definitely should not be holding secrets, saying something here, saying something there. Because one thing I learned about Jesus, and I learned about the Bible, he said, darkness will come to the light. Mm -hmm. It true. will be known. Yeah. So I try to be open and honest on what I'm feeling, and I take the consequences, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But I feel okay because I was honest. We have to be honest with each other. We have to care about each other. We have to love. And I don't know what, what plans you have, but we have members who don't come for don't come for communion. I would like to, or maybe a deacon should go to their house and give them communion. We don't we don't have that many members. 
we can definitely do the few that we have. And I'm asking that we start loving on them. Sister Katie haven't been here for a while, I miss her. <clears throat> but I want us to understand we're responsible for it. Every leader is responsible for God's children. And I give you that and ask that. I hope that word bless you. I hope to help you to see things that just you might need to work on for yourself. Nobody's yeah. perfect. A and I'll turn it back. Yeah, I'll turn it back. In the old time. Deacon Prince's hand. And it's